Welcome to Postcolonial Space. I'm Masood Raja. And today I'm going to take a few moments to talk about Foucault's thoughts about disciplinarity and the creation of dorsal bodies. Now, to be very clear about what do I mean by disciplinarity, of course, I mean, I highly encourage you to read Foucault, but there are two phases of Foucault's work. The first one we call the archaeological Foucault, and the later works are somehow classified as genealogical Foucault. The main difference between the two is that in his archaeological phase, Foucault is fairly structuralist, but he's also focusing on how discourses of power and law shape individual human bodies or label individual humans, right? What's the impact of it on human beings? The genealogical Foucault traces the impact of law and discourses on larger populations. That's why the concept for that is governmentality. So that's done through census, through designating groups as deviant or as not up to the mark. So these are the two distinctions. Now the most important discussion of disciplinarity and creation of docile bodies is included in Foucault's Discipline and Punish. And in that book, I mean, if you read the book, it starts with a harrowing account of a quartering, right? Which used to be the punishment for regicide. And that is an exact historical account. And as you read it, what he lays down for us is that we think when we compare our current disciplinary practices to what used to be done, we somehow always assume that, you know, we have become better. But what he tries to highlight is that in the modern incarceration system, actually the impact is deeper and more intrusive because we don't just punish the body. We also try to shape the very souls of people, right? And that's why in that harrowing account at the end, when Damien, the person who is being executed, when he talks to the priest, right? The priest tells him, your soul is safe, right? Your body is being destroyed, right? He has that consolation. So in order to make his point, Foucault gives us the example of this French, French incarceration system for juveniles. Right, where young people were brought in for whatever they had done. The punishment was indefinite. It was connected to they reforming themselves. And then they were regimented into family groups. They would have two elders who were also, you know, convicts leading the group. And they will have regimented chores every single day. And at the end of the evening, they all had to account for their actions. If they had done something wrong, they were punished for that. And that is what he's talking about. That these people then, they are functional, they are accountable, but their subjectivities are completely docile. They become part of the system to a point that during the revolution, when everyone else, French Revolution, you know, is freed and all young men in these prisons actually didn't even want to go out because they didn't know how to exist in a non-regimented world, right? So disciplinarity and creation of docile bodies then aims at shaping our very souls so that we produce human bodies that are capable of work, that are capable of performing the functions that we need from them, but at the same time have no will or thought processes of their own. So in that sense, then the modern punishment system, according to Foucault, 
is more destructive, right? Because it takes away the human agency from people and replaces it with a sort of subjectivity which is over-determined and shaped into this human body that can perform all the functions but has no agency of its own. That is what he's talking about. So this creation of docile bodies then in the modern incarceral system is not just part of the prison system. You, me and everyone else is also constantly being shaped into a docile body. How? Think of it, if you're a student and if you live in the United States, no one can coerce you to be obedient. No one can tell you you should not speak up, but there are systems in place. The financial aid system, scholarship system, which already dictate your behavior discursively because you know that your scholarship is connected to good conduct. It is connected to good grades, right? So without even someone telling you, you, you are monitoring your own self and modulating your behavior in a way you're acting as a docile body. I mean, let's go beyond that. People like me who have secure jobs, right? But if we think of leaving our job for whatever reasons, even on principles, we may not be able to do that in a system like this because what will be on your mind? How will I pay my bills, right? Who will pay for my health care? Right? All of these systems are there to keep us docile, to keep our bodies obedient. Right? Think of the American healthcare system. It is employee provided health care most of the time. What purpose does it serve? You know, it serves the purpose of keeping the employees in their place because even if they are unhappy, they are not likely to revolt. They are not likely to leave because it will be hard for them to get health care. And since they can't go and get government provided health care, that produces in them a certain kind of docility, right? A certain kind of obedience. So most of the times, you know, when you read Foucault, obviously these things are discursively produced. And when we use the term discursively produced, what we mean by it is that in any given living situation, there is a dominant discourse. A discourse is a body of knowledge, people who have the power to pronounce things in it, right? People who have a body of law, all of these things combined decide the discursive milieu, right, within which you, me, and everyone exists. When that discourse combined with power, prestige, and institutional power forces us, without us knowing it, to modulate our behavior, to be submissive, right, to at least take more punishment and to keep producing more work, that means that we have been transformed, not transformed, but made into docile bodies. And you don't just have to go to prisons to find examples of it. Now, disciplinarity then is a kind of discourse that impacts literally how we, per we perform our identities in the world. Right? And then beyond that, how do we behave, conduct ourselves? Because a discourse already is predetermining for us our very actions. So in so many ways then in the contemporary neoliberal capital, right? if you're a worker, intellectual, or part of the um, manual labor, because there is no safety net, and the unions have been decimated. All of it then becomes a sort of a economic discourse that constantly keeps producing docile bodies. Precarity produces docile bodies so that the, the machine of capital as it exists right now can use our bodies and our minds knowing that we do not have many options to challenge it 
to change our lived conditions or to even sometimes think a different way. So that's a little bit about Foucault disciplinarity and the creation of docile bodies. I hope it is useful to you. I absolutely understand that it is not all exhaustive and I may have absolutely missed something important. Feel free to teach me more about it. But if you have some time at your disposal, I highly recommend that you read Discipline and Punish and then make up your own mind about what I just talked about. Thank you so much and I will now See you next time. Until then, as always, peace and love.